This is the Akai Ewe 4000S, and it is not as easy to play as I thought it would be. So the electric wind instrument was originally invented by a guy named Neil Steiner in the 1960s. He originally conceptualized a brass style synthesizer and began prototyping that concept in the 1970s. A woodwind version of that, the electric wind instrument, was developed shortly afterwards. Now back then, the Iwi consisted of two parts, a wind controller and a digitally controlled analog synthesizer. Check out this video of Michael Brecker demoing the Iwi. Well, this is a collection of synthesizers that is triggered by this instrument that Which I'm holding. Is called... This is called an Iwi, and uh, it's built by a gentleman named Niall Steiner in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. And he designed this uh, a few years ago and built it in his house. And there are a few of them floating around. And I was uh, fortunate enough to get a hold of one a, a few years ago. And I've spent uh, the last few years learning how to play it and learning how to program it and, and use it in a musical way. Nowadays, the Japanese company Akai, and there are several others as well, such as Roland, has modernized the Iwi and made it into a much smaller package as you see before you. So today, I'm going to be reviewing this Akai Iwi 4000S and kind of comparing it against its other two models that are available, the Iwi 5000 and the USB version of the Iwi. So we'll start with the fingering system. Now all Akai Iwis utilize the bohm fingering system, utilized by most woodwinds. So if you're a flute player, a saxophonist, oboe clarinet, you'll probably be uh, familiar with it. You can actually program it several different ways. One is your standard Iwi fingering, which like I said, utilizes the bohm system. It's pretty standard, close to a recorder. You can also program it like a saxophone, an oboe, or a flute. And don't worry if you're a brass player because it also has an E EVI mode, which stands for Electronic Valve Instrument. So they were thinking about all of us here, except for percussionists. But if you're a woodwind player, just follow along. I'm gonna play a two octave scale and try to zoom in on my fingers so you can see exactly uh, what the fingering system looks like. Right now I have it programmed uh, for saxophone. So here we go. So in my hands, the Iwi actually feels more like a clarinet or a soprano saxophone, except you don't actually depress the keys. They're all touch activated. So altogether, there are 13 keys on the front of the instrument, and on the back, there's actually an octave roller system that takes a little bit of getting used to. So like I mentioned before, your thumb actually rests back here and it rolls in between the octaves, and it goes up an octave for every roller that you actually go over. Here's a video of me demonstrating demonstrating that. There's also a glide plate to the right side of the roller system that allows you to kind of do a glissando up or down throughout those octaves. Let's take a listen to this. And in addition to that, there are also sensors both above and below your right hand thumb that allow you to bend notes either up or down. Two other features that I love about this instrument are the octave and hold button. So they're actually located on the front of the instrument. You can just lightly touch them with your right hand and either activate them to play octaves or the hold will allow you to hold certain notes so you can voice out certain chords if you like. So the 
great thing about this Iwi and the Akai Iwi 5000 is all the sounds are already pre-built into the instrument. So the 4000S actually has 80 sounds programmed into it all together. For some reason on the sheet, it goes to 100 and just repeats numbers 81 through 100. I don't know why they just didn't stop at 80. But just look at the names of some of these. Look at 39, Fatter Saw. Let's do a little bit of a demo. Here we go, here's number 39. Or number 44, Stonehenge. Let's do one more, number 11, How Low Can You Go? <laughs> this thing is too fun. So there's a plethora of adjustments that can be made on this instrument. Let's just go ahead and start at the top. So we'll start with the mouthpiece. Now this is actually replaceable. This is a silicone tip, I believe, but if it gets old, you can always buy another one. It's kind of easy to get off. All you have to do is take a screw, unscrew it here, pop it off, pop new one on, screw it on, and it's pretty secure. One thing I will say about this instrument is that it does not require as much air as you probably think. Uh, to play the instrument. At first I had a lot of back pressure, so I had to make a couple of adjustments, but yeah, not as much air as you think. All right, so moving on down, we already talked about the octave roller system, but I failed to mention you can actually transpose this into all different keys. So essentially you can get really good if you wanna learn the instrument at playing in C and just kinda cheat your way through it, but what's the fun in that, right? And of course, right next to that transpose button, you have a setup button as well to make various adjustments when you set the instrument up. It also has a space for your neck strap. Very hard to play without it. I will say it's not like you know an oboe or something where you can get away with it because your finger will slide on these keys and you'll be bending notes for days. One thing that I found interesting is just how you adjust settings on here. So this is actually a grounded screw. So you'll see when I pr put my finger on the screw, it lights up the display up here, which allows me to change the sounds within the instrument. And as we move on down the instrument, we have an effects and a level button, and of course how you plug it in. It can be used as a MIDI controller, so you also have a MIDI in and a MIDI out, as well as a space for headphones and a 1 8 inch jack out to plug into an amp. Actually, the amp that I'm using is a Bose S1. Highly recommend it. It's actually Bluetooth. That's probably another video I should make, but it's a really good uh, amp. So the key difference between this instrument and the Iwi 5000, there's actually two big things for me. One, this is actually battery operated or DC 9 volt in. So this instrument actually takes four AA batteries or you can, like I just said, plug it in with the 9 volt. The Iwi 5000 actually uses a lithium ion battery. I've heard various pros and cons for that. I, I believe that if you get on an airplane, they have certain restrictions. Not that anybody's getting on an airplane anytime soon, but they have certain restrictions with lithium ion batteries. I haven't heard the best things about them, but it is what it is. Also, the Iwi 5000, unlike this instrument, is wireless. So it actually comes with an electronic wireless receiver. So instead of plugging directly into the instrument, you can just literally have wireless freedom, walk around your room or apartment or concert venue, wherever you're at, and play your Iwi freely without the hassle of wires. Despite some of the cons and the complaints that I've heard about the Iwi 5000 and the lithium ion batteries, I've actually played one and I thoroughly enjoyed just kind of having that freedom. It allows me to practice pretty much anywhere without disturbing my neighbors. Another potential con for all of these instruments is that they actually don't come with a case. So they come in a box and you pretty much get this and that's it and some instruction manuals and cords and all that good stuff, but there's no case. So if you were to get this and you want to take care of it, I would probably recommend getting some type of soprano sax case, something cheap, you know, just to protect it so you don't accidentally drop it or uh, destroy the internal electronics of it. So I haven't mentioned very much about the Iwi USB. It's essentially this instrument, except for it to work, you have to plug it into a computer. I think it's a good alternative if you have a, a tight budget and you wanna get started with the Iwi, that's a good place to start because you can always plug it into your laptop, assuming you have one, and enjoy the many sounds that you can make with the Iwi. 
Uh, they start around $277, I believe. I'll have the links for all of these down in my description. Uh, but the Ewe USB, like I said, starts around $277. I believe nowadays, I'm gonna have to look this up. I believe you can get the Ewe 4000S, this model that I have, for about $300. And the Ewe 5000 actually cost about $800. But here's the main question that you're probably asking, would I recommend it? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. I would definitely recommend this to woodwind players because you already kind of have an advantage, if you will, or even if you're a brass player and you want to play around or tinker with the electronic valve instrument mode, this will be recommended for you. I would not actually recommend this if this is your first instrument. Have a little bit of musical background before you actually spend the money and go out and get one of these. At least that's my recommendation. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Leave me a question if you have any down in the comment section, and I'll see you on the next video. Out.